The peace of the Lord be with you, and uh, good evening. This is our devotion for Wednesday, January 5th, and um, good, to, good to be with you all. Uh, as you saw, on, and it, most of you, I'm sure, saw in the email, um, we, we had COVID, apparently uh, Omicron, because um, Jessica and the kids, even though they had it in October, had it all again. I, even though I was vaccinated, I had it, and, and, uh, and, and really was the first one in the family to have it, so I uh, gave it to everybody else. Um, but anyway, I'm, I'm doing much better now. Uh, it was one of those things that wasn't, uh, wasn't all that bad. I would say the the worst day was, was like a, a, a mild flu and, and a number of other days were kind of like a bad cold. Um, and I've been tired, but, uh, but now I, I, I feel pretty, today I pretty much felt, felt back to normal. So, uh, glad for that. Thanks be to God. And, um, glad to, uh, glad to be, be here with it, with the devotion. Um, Tomorrow, January 6th, is the, the official observation of the, the Feast of Epiphany. Uh, today, Wednesday, January 5th, is the, the, the 12th day of Christmas, right? So, so Epiphany is tomorrow. Um, we'll be observing Epiphany, though, Sunday morning. And so uh, that's what I'll be doing for the readings. I'll be doing the, the, the Epiphany readings. And in view of that, our gospel lesson for Sunday is from Matthew chapter 12, verses 1 through 12, which is the, uh, the, the, the wise men, as we call it. So uh, I'll be getting this out at the close of the day. Uh, we'll follow the close of the day order, page 298 in the hymnal. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and peace at the last. It is good to give thanks to, your, to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, O Most High to herald your love in the morning, your truth at the close of the day. All right. Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men, magi, from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose, and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And assembling all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet, And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod summoned the wise men secretly and ascertained from them what time the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go, and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word that I too may come and worship him. After listening to the king, they went on their way. And behold, the star that they had seen when it arose, when it rose, excuse me, went before them until it came to rest over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary, uh, with Mary his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. Then opening their treasures... They offered him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed to their own country by another way. Uh, amen. Let us pray. Blessed Lord, as you uh, revealed the, uh, the kingship of Jesus to, to the Magi, we pray that you would reveal that continually to us, that we would see the rule that is his, and um, to see how he rules in his church according to his grace and how he rules in the world according to his great power. And we pray that you would grant us to live always under that grace, to trust always in it, to, um, to be thankful for that grace in all things and always to submit to that rule over all things, uh, that rule of all authority in heaven and on earth, that we would be, that we would be faithful to Him and to You in all things, and in the knowledge of Your great love for us, as You live and reign, one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever, Amen. Um, so as we as we have this this gospel lesson here, um, you know, as I mentioned, this is the gospel lesson for the the festival of Epiphany. Epiphany, as I think I say every year means a, a manifestation, right? This is uh, the season where we see Jesus manifesting himself as, as God in the flesh. You know, he's born and laid in that manger at the first Christmas as God in the flesh, and, 
and we see these ways that he manifests manifests excuse me himself as that and and the the story that we start with is the revelation the manifestation of that as these magi come from the east now one of the things that we'll talk about in particular tomorrow is this aspect of these magi being gentiles um, i'm not necessarily going to talk about the magi in particular i'll touch on that a little bit but the reading uh, makes the point about this salvation of God being for the Gentiles. And that's that's a very important thing, is that you've got these Gentile magi coming and and, and giving homage to to this king, this this Jesus, this Messiah, this Jewish Messiah who is um is coming on behalf of the people. Um of all people, right? Not just Jews, but but for all people. So uh as we see this then, okay, we've got uh, the, the visit here. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod, uh, Herod the king, behold, the wise men came from the east, the magi came from the east to Jerusalem. Uh, and, and, you know, as we hear that, we say, who are these magi? Um, you know, they would have been, uh, they, you know, we, we, we have to think about the song We Three Kings. They probably wouldn't actually have been kings who ruled. They would have been men in the courts of kings, you know, wise men in the courts of kings. And uh, interestingly, you know, one of the as I was reading a commentary about this, the, the commentator made the point that, um, you know, it's sort of noteworthy that uh, the the kings that these magi would have served would would likely have been kings that that oppressed the the, the true worship uh, of God and the worship of the true God, right? So. Um, so kind of interesting, you know, that's a part of the whole picture here as these magi come. Uh, how do they How do they know that, well, they see the star? How do they know the star was significant? Uh, the, the, there, there's some thought that, uh, you know, that they would have had some of the Old Testament from the, the uh, that the, these magi would have come from the east, would have come from perhaps like Babylon, where the Israelites had been captive. They would have maybe had some of the scriptures available to them there, that sort of thing. Um, so in any case... They would have been learned to the extent that they would have known that this star was uh, was important. So they come from from the east to Jerusalem, saying, "Where is he who has been born King of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose, and have come to worship him." Uh, in this worship, uh, the commentator that I read made the point that this isn't necessarily divine worship, but this is the worship that would have been given to to a king. Uh, in fact, the gifts that we see wouldn't have been necessarily distinctly uh, for for worship of a divinity, but um, but but again, to a king. We'll talk about that here in a second, though. Uh, when Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. Uh, I think I'm going to preach on that that verse here this weekend, and the and the the trouble that 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 Herod has of of the threat to his power. Herod was crazy, and any threat to his power, he was was was. Uh, upset by he in fact killed they think he killed his own wife and and uh and, and a couple of his sons because of that threat so uh jerusalem wouldn't have been troubled because they they loved him they would have been troubled because this maybe would have meant harsher taxation which he was already harsh about uh would have meant more threats would have meant tightening security all that kind of stuff um because here his power is threatened right so anyway uh verse four and assembling all the chief priests and scribes of the people he inquired of them where the christ was to be born uh, so, interestingly, the Jewish king knows where to go to find out about the Messiah, the ultimate Jewish king, and, and yet none of them give Jesus this honor, right? So they told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet, In you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. That, uh, that reference is from... Uh, cited from Micah 5.2. So uh, if you want to want to read that, and it won't read exactly the same. That's uh, Bethlehem Ephrathah is what it says in, in, in Micah. Uh, Matthew kind of a, a adjusts the language or land of Judah, is giving specificity to it. Um, you know, but still still uh, understanding the um, the meaning there, leaving the meaning in there. Uh, so then Herod summoned the wise men secretly and ascertained from them what time the star had appeared. This sounds like it was about two years before that because you see this in what we call the slaughtering of the holy innocents, verses 13 and following, that the um, you know G that, that Herod goes and kills all of the, the Jewish boys in uh, in Bethlehem. They were under two. Now, Bethlehem was small. That could have been, you know, six children or something like that. But it's still it's still sad, right? Uh, and, and it's 
that's a feast that we that we observe the feast of the holy innocents uh, in in the church so um, in any case, uh, and he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word that I too may come and worship him. Uh, and after listening, they went on their way, so they don't know that Herod's tricking them, that he's actually trying to find Jesus to kill him. Uh, and behold, uh, the star that they had seen when it rose went before them until it came to rest over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. You know, you get the impression there that the star had kind of disappeared. They make this stop in Jerusalem where they would expect a king to be. And then um, he's not there. Excuse me, they're sent on their way. And then the star reappears because the Lord wants wants them to find Jesus, right? And worship him uh, to make the, the fulfillment of these things. Uh, and going into the house, uh, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. Uh, so that, you know, Jesus and, and his family are in a house. Uh, how does this work? You know, with timing and everything, you know, it's not clear. Uh, you know, we see that, that Mary and Joseph lived in, in Nazareth. Um, the commentator I read say maybe, maybe they actually went to Nazareth. I, I think, oh gosh, it seems like they really went to Bethlehem. Um, you know, so I don't know if they were just living in a house temporarily in Bethlehem. You know, it's not. It's kind of hard to know exactly. We know that at 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 a point after this, they go to Egypt, again, thir verses thirteen and following, and then they go and live in Nazareth after they return. But in any case, uh, they find Mary in the house with with Jesus. They worship them, uh, worship him. Excuse me, worship Jesus. Then they open their their treasures, their theosaurus, uh, um, you know, thesauruses. Excuse me. You know where we get the word thesauruses. They open their thesauruses, uh, their treasuries, and they offer him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. Uh, those gifts could have some symbolic reference. Uh, as, as far back as, as Irenaeus, who was about 180, a church father, uh, he, he made the association of, of gold with Jesus' kingly nature, frankincense with his divine nature, and myrrh with his sacrificial death. So some, um, some insight into uh, kind of the perspective of these gifts there. And then being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed to their own country by another way. Um, so, you know, God working all of this to fulfill what he has written and to protect that, that fulfillment in Christ. So, uh, what do we, what do we take from this? These magi coming, showing us the true worship of Jesus and, 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 and see God working in all of that to show salvation for all people as Jesus is manifested as the God who is in the flesh coming to save not only the Jews, but, uh, but, but all peoples, uh, who trust in him. By his grace, thanks be to God. All right, we continue with the, um, with the Apostles' Creed, on page 298 in the hymnal. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lord, now you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people. A light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day, and I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong, and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul in all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And uh, everyone have a, a good evening, and uh, I thank you all for, for your, your well wishes and for the prayers as we, uh, as we re recover. So God's blessings be with you all.